tight and fat, low end. We all want that, right? But it can be a struggle for a lot of people to achieve it. But before we can give solutions, I think it's important to define what a tight and fat low end really means. In my world, they are the same. There has to be control and there has to be the right amount of low end for it to sound tight and fat. And when I talk about the right amount, I talk about the ratio between the subs and the low mids, because that's very important to achieve that ratio between the two. So here are four tips that might help you to get that control and the right amount at the same time. Let's jump into it. The first one is about making sure there's not too much low end in your mix. When there's too much low end, your mix will just sound heavy, not clear and not attractive in any way. So it's about finding that good spot where the low end sits. You know, that's the secret of a good low end. You know, not too much, not too little. We have two things playing in here. We have the ears and the eyes. And when I say the ears, I mean the whole body. And with low end, you don't only hear the bass, you feel the bass. Unfortunately, when it comes to knowing when there's too much bass in a mix, there's no fast track to that. There's no shortcut. You need to be in a room you know, and you need to spend enough time in that room so you know when the bass is right. And that takes time, it takes experience. Like the way I learned low end was sitting in the same room and, and memorizing in my body and my ears how it felt when the low end was right. But when I found that point, I could get back to that every time. The second aspect of this is the eyes. And I have a system in place on my, on my master bus that I find super useful. And this has a lot to do with goalkeeper plugins, as I call them. Because most plugins we put on, we put them on because we want them to do something, right? But goalkeeper plugins are the opposite. We don't want them to do something because if they activate, it's because something is wrong, right? When I, when I mix low end heavy music, I have a fab filter MB on my master bus and it's just lying there as a goalkeeper. So whenever the subs become too much, it activates and I can see it. And then I know that something's off in my, in my sub region because that plugin shouldn't activate. It should be sleeping most of the times. Another plugin I have on my stereo bus is a VU meter. So by looking at your VU meter, which should be on your stereo bus, if it's too much low end in the mix, the needle tends to move slowly and sluggishly and it tends to get stuck in places. But if the bass is just about right, the needle should move faster and more rapidly and freely. So part two in this equation of low end has to do with keeping the low end tight. And there are many ways of achieving this, but I like to use a combination of multiband compression and expansion together. And what I do is that I send my drums and bass together to a bus. Um, so I get the combined low end from the drums and the bass, uh, and then I can control that together with a multiband compressor, only ducking the, the low end of them together. But then I do this in combination with a multiband expander in the lower mids. So every time there's too much low end in the mix, I don't only dip them momentarily, I momentarily add more lower mids too. And this gives us a, a tighter low end that is more even, and that translates better to smaller speakers too. So we're kind of shifting the energy from the super low end to the lower mids, giving us two things at the same time. And I will make a separate video about this in the future, exactly how I do it. But in short, it's about using a fab filter MB, and it's about clicking this button, which allows you to link two bands together so that the compressor actually only reacts on the low end, but then it's linking to the low mids, so they're both working together. So part three in this equation, it's about removing and cleaning. Because a big part of keeping the low end tight and fat is about removing the right parts from the low end. Not only from the kick and the bass, but from everything else too. Because remember, everything in a mix is connected. Everything affects everything. So nothing else is allowed to go into the VIP region, which is all the frequencies below 100 Hertz. And then I also only allow one element to go into the region below 60 Hertz. So I always choose one of the kick and the bass. One of them is allowed to go in there. The other one gets filtered out below 60 Hertz. But the second part of this is about the lower mids again, because when it comes to the low end, the lower mids are just as important. If they are muddy and not clean, your low end will never sound fat and tight. In this region, a lot of the instruments will meet. A lot of their fundamental frequencies will pile up in the lower mids and create muddiness and boominess. 
So I use a lot of subtractive EQ in the lower mids. And sadly, when it comes to subtractive EQ, this is not something you can teach or learn in a fast way. Again, you have to just do it by experience. So I really recommend that you spend hours and hours and maybe even hundreds of hours working with subtractive EQ and slowly learning and mastering this because it takes a lot of trial and error and every mix is different. So it will never be super easy because every song is gonna be unique. But I can give you a couple of pointers. Try to use a, a narrow cue when you make dips in the lower mids and, and try to take small steps at a time. Try not to make two big dips in one go. So I usually do one dB here and another dB and half there and you know, small steps. So you're kind of massaging the lower mids slowly and then you listen and then you go back and you listen. And with experience, it will be easier, but it'll never be easy, you know? Remember that and practice and practice and you will eventually become a master at this, I promise. But of course, there are many more aspects of the low end too. It's a big topic. By the way, if you want to join one of my live streams, I do live streams regularly inside of my community and it's completely free. So if you join my community, just go to my website. There's a link below. So there's a, a chat room there where you can ask questions to other members or to me. And there's also a live stream that happens every now and then so that you can join in and you can ask me questions and, and we can talk more about this topic together. So uh, have a great day and thanks for watching and uh, yeah, see you soon.